a political debacle is slowing down the adoption of green hydrogen. Yes, folks, that's right. On top of inflation, record high capital costs, and incentive regulation that is not clear, the progress of various hydrogen investments over the past few years has slowed down abruptly in 2024. What's happening here is truly fascinating and is an opportunity for both investors and industry participants to capitalize at a time when everything has slowed down to a halt. Since the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law in 2022, hydrogen projects have seen a record amount of inflows. Projects have been announced recordly in the United States and in Europe, and investors have been pouring a lot of capital to support them, along with design support as well as engineering services. But in the midst of record high inflation, an extremely strong dollar, and obvious slowdowns in the clean energy economy as a whole, as seen by the sales of electric cars and the adoption of solar, hydrogen, which is a nascent industry and has yet to scale, is the one that's getting the shortest end of the stick. This concern revolves entirely around a term called Final Investment Decision, or FID, which is essentially the state at which a project has guaranteed all the hardware, the supply, and the demand. All the hardware is ready. All you need is money to hit the bank and construction to begin. However, the economic forces of the past 12 to 18 months have reduced the conversion rate of pre-FID to FID projects significantly particularly in the United States. As you can see, folks, there are more than 20 million metric tons per year of green hydrogen projects announced by 2030. However, almost 90% of them are not even in FID stage just yet. This is attributed to not only one reason, but many that are correlated towards what the government is doing right now particularly a lack of clarity on incentives or something called the 45V regulation has delayed customer confidence in this industry and is hence creating a little bit of a black eye for hydrogen so far in 2024. As a matter of fact, U.S. Senator Joe Manchin has threatened to sue the federal government's IRS if the guidelines on this specific tax credit which is going to hurt the bottom line of many hydrogen projects because of its extremely stringent terms of service if there is no adjustment to it, especially before the start of the election year. Joe Manchin is a pro-fossil fuel multimillionaire who has really no foot in the game, but he was an instrumental part in passing the Inflation Reduction Act and supporting the subsidy announced by the government to help move the hydrogen economy forward. And problem number one with this 45V subsidy is the three pillars that it is entirely constructed around. These pillars start with the first requirement that electrolyzers, which are essentially the machines that generate hydrogen from clean electricity, must be powered by clean energy, which is generated within the same hour that it's used, also called hourly matching. And secondly, there's regulation enforces that all electricity must come from generation that comes online within 36 months of the hydrogen facility itself. And as it turns out, these policies might just be too restrictive for producers in today's day and age. Because producing green hydrogen costs anywhere from $8 to $12 a kilogram, whereas producing hydrogen from natural gas or methane only costs $3. Meaning, for all the producers that must require their emissions to be cut by 95%, projects using the 45V subsidy are simply not going to be feasible in the short term, and investors are not going to convert to final investment decision to get these projects up and running. Now, obviously, these regulations have to be strict because we don't want to fund another subsidy for the fossil fuel industry which is what a lot of experts in the industry say. And that's true because blue hydrogen, which is hydrogen that is produced from methane reforming 
but with carbon that is captured or sequestered, is yet to be a proven technology at scale. And although there's a lot of suppliers and technologists that are working on making those compressors, those capture molecules, and those modules much better at doing what they do, there is still leeway for these big oil giants like Shell, Chevron, and ExxonMobil to potentially leverage it to continue selling hydrogen with a high carbon footprint. This issue is exemplified when you think about the idea that it takes years and years to permit new electricity supply on the grid today. So requiring hydrogen producers to use them at a time when they finalize the development of their projects results in them having no online activity for at least a few years while waiting for new supply to come online. And this, as a matter of fact, folks, brings into perspective exactly why hydrogen is important in the energy mixture. Because the only way to guarantee an electron is clean on the massive electric grid is by generating the electricity at the same time as it is being used, because electricity flows to the path of least impedance. But that, obviously, with software and tools we have today, is virtually impossible to do unless you are making sure there is clean grid-connected resources available at the same time. But that doesn't guarantee that hydrogen producers can produce their hydrogen at the right price or at the right time if they have to wait for clean energy to be built right next to them. As important as it is to ensure that hydrogen is produced cleanly, it's also important to stir demand as well as supply, which is something that Europe has perfected doing for quite a long time now. It's one of the handful of reasons that the EU is leading the charge in electric vehicles, for example, and China is leading the charge in hydrogen project development because of regulation that is not as restrictive and much clearer for hydrogen producers to bow. We need some serious reform on this 45V subsidy because it seriously has immense potential to decarbonize the supply of hydrogen and stir new demand in sectors that can benefit from lower cost. What's more is that as inflation comes down, which has been the biggest contributor to electrolyzer system cost changes over the past year or so, there are going to be significant profitability improvements in the projections for many hydrogen projects. And any significant delays in their commissioning and FID process could significantly delay the competitiveness and also potentially hurt the scale of the industry to help bring down the cost even more. Europe's fast finalization of hydrogen policy and demand mandates have given developers in the state more certainty, and the United States needs to follow with a new revision to this 45V to help relax these restrictions. The American hydrogen generation market is expected to grow from $18 billion to $31 billion by 2033, and project developers are already much more susceptible to external funding processes than players like industrial gas companies like Lind and Air Products, which is exactly the reason why the hydrogen industry has seen a contraction in hype as well as talk in 2024. As you folks, that is just my take on the situation. So let me know your thoughts on 45V and hydrogen regulation down in the comment section below. Take care.